what is the first story that pops out in your mind when someone says Tanner Gill? <laughs> well, there's one thing, but I don't think it's very appropriate. <laughs> this isn't a sad story. Tanner Gillen wouldn't have wanted it that way. And with Tanner, there really weren't any sad stories to tell. Scott was trying to place his order, and he said, I want fries, and he's just doing this, and then he said, Paging doctor. All right, if you've seen The Hangover, you can finish the quote on your own. And if that doesn't give you an idea on his sense of humor. What is your favorite joke he ever told you? <laughs> You put me on the spot here, and I, prob I probably could not come up with one that was G-rated. We're close to a minute into this story, and the word cancer has yet to appear. Because that's not really Tanner's story. But for the sake of context, here's the spark notes. In March of 2018, Tanner had what doctors initially thought was a stroke. More tests revealed glioblastoma, an aggressive form of brain cancer. Yeah, I took it hard. Very hard. Still take it hard. But yeah, he was always... Yeah talking to me, comforting me, make sure I was okay. We knew he was going to pass away. He was so grateful to us and said, you guys have given me the best life. 14 years wasn't enough. Tanner died on January 23rd, 2019. He was just 14 years old. But the stories of the kid who could slide between Gwen Stefani, Sinatra, and Biggie with ease live on through the photos on the wall, the acknowledgments from celebrities on TV and on the ball field, but most of all, through the words of those who saw Tanner's fun-loving toughness each day. He would sing and dance, and he couldn't move the right side, so he had this, like, shoulder dance that he would do. And Tanner's legacy even goes beyond that. His parents are donating his brain and tumor for cancer research. It's not enough to bring him back. Nothing ever will be. But it's more than enough to ensure his impact goes far beyond central Illinois. He taught me more in the last 10 months than I could have ever taught him his whole life. He was my son, but he was also my best friend. The greatest gift of Tanner was that he gave tenfold the love that we gave him. And on the urn that holds his ashes, Tanner lets loose one final quip. It's awfully dark in here. Making sure his story isn't a sad one to tell. Indicator Darren Mullen, WAND News. I was literally um, at the mercy of my abuser. We have very high rates of domestic violence in this community. There is hardly a day goes by when we don't have new domestic violence arrests. The numbers are staggering, but it's hard to get a true picture of it in your mind until you see the paper trail. I was saved by the appearance of the police. And hear the stories. There's still those unspoken victims out there who are needing help, even as we're speaking right now. Jane Doe came to America to find love. I met my husband through social media. And after months of communication, we decided, you know, I have to come here. But the love that brought her overseas quickly washed away in a storm of abuse. It all started with verbal abuse and then escalating to phys uh, physical abuse. And yeah, it just got worse and worse after that. It continued for months until police arrested her husband for abusing another woman. It meant that um, I became homeless as a result because it was only the two of us. It was me and my husband. I didn't know exactly you know, what to do next. I've been here at Dove in this program going on 29 years. Thank you for calling Dove Incorporated. How can I help you? Laws have changed. Communities began to form coordinated community response programs. Then we saw change. Jane found her way to Dove Incorporated into the care of Terry Ducey. Sometimes when you've been in this work for so long, you just assume that everyone knows, but they don't. Since July 2018, Dove has served 405 men and women and 106 children, 
providing them with shelter, critical services, and emotional support. I don't know why it is so elevated here other than to say we have got to start looking at this as the crime that it is. We looked through the Macon County arrest affidavits our station compiled since May 2018. All of them. In fact, we looked at 640 domestic violence sworn statements, and that's just the past year in Macon County alone. That averages out to almost two per day, and those are just the ones we know about. That's 640 people who are like you and I. Their mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, children. Well, I'm not surprised at that number in the least bit. I can tell you that uh, Monday morning when I came in, uh, we had 10 people in custody. Jay Scott has been trying these cases as a prosecutor for 34 years. Many times, they don't go as planned. We had a case uh, several years ago where uh, a man and a woman had a long-term relationship. She had him arrested for domestic battery. She recanted. She had him arrested a second time for domestic battery. She again recanted. We did prosecute him a third time, and that was after he had killed her. Some of the suspects arrested end up back in that same cycle. In our stack of sworn statements, 25 names appeared more than once. Again, this is in just a year's time. If you go back to 1996 to 1999, we ranked number one per capita in the state. Uh, since then, we average third, fourth. The numbers from the Illinois Criminal Justice Information Authority back that up. For the last year on record 2016, Macon County was fourth in the state for abuse arrest per capita. But this isn't just a Macon County issue. Sangamon County led the state and Champaign County was eighth. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have that much more occurrences. It means that we take a, a more aggressive stance in how we enforce the domestic violence laws. Deputy Chief Shane Brandell and his officers are on the front lines of the abuse epidemic. They respond to the calls. Domestic violence calls do account for our largest block. And make the arrests. In 2018, we had over 4,000 calls for domestic violence. Each arrest contributing to that stack of papers we sorted through earlier. We may go out to a house six or seven times before we end up making one arrest just because the information isn't there or it never got to the point where there's an arrestable offense that occurred. Jane's abuser was ultimately convicted of domestic battery, set to serve seven years behind bars. That conviction will never take away the trauma, but it brings some semblance of closure. Whenever I, I go past that place, you know, I would feel afraid because it, it was so emotional and psychological but now um, since he I know he's far away I feel quite safe and um, I'm able to fo to focus on building myself indicator Darren Mullen WAND news I think it's just kind of become second nature I don't really think if something happens in the race I know what to do. Daniel Romanchuk might be the best athlete you don't know yet. I started wheelchair racing when I was around four years old. And for the past 16 years, he's taken that need for speed to, well, just about everywhere. A lot of places, <laughs> Europe, all across the states, in Rio. But few places in the world compare to Boston, its famed marathon serving as the Super Bowl of endurance. For the first time since 1993, an American wins. The yeah, he won. Boston is just such a historic and iconic race, being where the, the wheelchair marathon got its start. But Daniel isn't coasting on the biggest win of his career. Six days a week, you'll find him here. Or here. Or here training in the tracks of the greats who came before him. That's very rewarding to see him as a part of that, that lineage. And as a coach, the best part of, of this sport is uh, seeing the athletes rise each day. There are people who I look, look up to and you know, have seen see their history. Daniel trains to win. He trains to push boundaries. He trains to race to a legacy, a race that doesn't have a finish line. It's kind of a dream come true um, to help progress the sport. How I look at cer certain things like, you know, a lot of records, and they're, they're things to be pushed. In Champaign, Darren Mullen, WAND News.